Hi, I'm Alex. I'm the creator of a website called maxmethods.com.au. Um, and so a whole bunch of different resources. Um, if you haven't heard about me before, um, I've been doing this for about 10 odd years, have about 70,000 students, parents, teachers who've used the website and logged in and that sort of stuff. It has a whole bunch of different things like books and video tutorials and all that sort of stuff as well. And um, there's a whole bunch of free resources, things like cheat sheets, videos and exam questions, obviously with work solutions, so it's worth checking out some of those. And in today's workshop, I'm going to cover sketching any graph, should be okay for year 11s, year 12s, some special people might be a little bit sleepy during it, it'll be all right. Um, it basically, the reason that sketching is so important is it makes life a lot easier. If you can visualize what you're doing and not just do the algebra, um, answering these questions isn't quite so tough. So my goal is to give you a good overview of sketching any graph to make less, uh, methods less painful. So we're going to start super basic. We're going to start with parabolas. And the word parabola basically means to throw next to. It comes from a couple of Greek words, para, which means next to, and bola, which means to throw. If we're moving around parabolas, we add a number to it, and that's going to move it up. And if we, um, say, subtract a number just to the x, that's going to move it sideways, usually the opposite direction is than you'd expect it to. So moving parabolas in full, you've got something like this. You move it on over by 6, move it up by 3, and there would be a turning point. Now, dilation, you're probably pretty familiar with that. Just need to stretch. If you've ever seen a person's eyes dilate, it just means that the black part becomes bigger. And um, we look at like a parabola, for instance, and dilation happens when there's a number in front of the whole graph, like this, or if there's a number just in front of the x, like this. But the thing is, when sketching, dilation mainly just affects intercepts. So let's say we get this thing, we stretch it out, we can see the biggest difference here is that the intercepts are just a little bit different. Other than that, it's pretty much the same graph. So we don't worry about dilation too much when we're sketching. Positive and negative parabolas, I mean, you can think of it that way if you want to. Um, positive basically means that it's going up all the time, negative means it's going down. And the way that you tell whether it's positive or negative is whatever's in front of that x squared. And the reason I'm going over parabolas so much is simply because you will see this is the same for literally every other graph. So sketching, you don't worry about dilation. You find the turning point, move it on over by six, move it up by three. And then you want to check for reflections as well, which this one has none. Now, um, yeah, same thing again. Turning point, two, six, sketch it in. Turning point, negative two, 4.5. Then we notice there's a reflection, so it's going to flip around. And we chuck it in like this. Now you notice I haven't found any intercepts yet because one of the main things that I like people to be able to do is to be able to sketch something in about 10 or so seconds. So this works with all the other functions. So you've got parabolas, you've got cubics, you've got your square root function, you've got your hyperbola and truncus, which you actually don't do in this curriculum. But what you'll notice is the shape of the graph is found out by just looking at what the power is. So if you've got a to the power of three, cubic, half, square root function, and negative one would be a uh, hyperbola. And moving them around is all the same. So we move this one around, six, three, And if we've got this one, same deal, we move it over by two, move it up by two. And with a hyperbola, two, two. 
So just going a little bit deeper into each one of these, we've got the square root function. Um, this is the square root graph. And it's a bit like you get yourself a parabola and just kind of tilt it on the side. And you chuck out that little bit. This is very similar to the y squared equals x graph. They're pretty much the same thing. And again, when you're sketching them, you find your turning point. We don't worry about dilations. And we just sketch in that shape. We saw the powers of the half, so we sketch in that half parabola in shape. When we look at the hyperbola, hyper comes from a Greek word meaning above, and bola means to throw. So it's a little bit like throwing above. And I made a superhero. Didn't quite get into Marvel, unfortunately. But he's got a superpower where he can throw it and then it just goes directly up. Actually, not very helpful for it. So, hyperbola had asymptotes, and that's just basically lines that the curve comes close to but doesn't touch. And so, when I'm sketching these, once I find the, I'm just going to call it a turning point, it's not technically a turning point, but once we find that turning point, 5, 2. What I like to do is just chuck in those asymptotes, chuck one along there and one down there, and then it's much easier to sketch in the graph. Now remember, because it's negative one, it's going to be this shape. So basically the whole idea is you write in the turning point and draw the graph. Two, three. Power is two, so it's a parabola, chuck it in. Uh, four, two. Power is three, so it's a cubic, so draw that in. Negative three, one. To the power of half means it's going to be that square root function. So we chuck that one in. Here we have 5, negative 3. And because it's to the power of negative 1, we know it's a hyperbola. So we want to chuck in a couple of asym asymptotes. There we go. And then we can draw in the graph. This is a little bit beyond the curriculum, but kind of worth knowing. Graphs with even powers. So when x has an even power, it's basically going to be a parabola. This is a parabola. This is a cortic. And if you look at it, it's basically the same as a parabola. The only difference is we kind of pull it down a little bit and it becomes a little bit squarer. And what's interesting is when you get to higher powers, it's pretty much the same shape. It just gets a bit squarer. So basically, when x has an even power, it's a parabola. If it's a higher power, it's a bit squarer. When x is an odd power, it's basically a cubic. So if we get a higher power, it's just going to be a square cubic, and an even higher power, an even square cubic. But odd power, this sort of shape. Odd power, even power. You got it? And they work the same way as well. So you've got 3, 2, shape, parabola, draw it in. Negative 5, 2 to the power of 6 means it's basically a parabola, but a bit squarer. Negative 3, 1 to the power of 3, it's going to be a cubic. And 5, 7, negative 7 to the power of 5, a cubic, but a bit squarer. Now, you've probably come across cortics more than anything else, that's the, to the power of 4, but it's worth knowing a little bit of that just as some background knowledge. So, moving around all of these graphs is the same. And the power tells you what the shape of the graph is. And there's not that many to remember. Um, so you can just remember that half the square root, negative one is hyperbola, even parabola, odd cubic. You can sketch pretty much any graph. And it actually works with your logs and your exponentials and all that other stuff as well. So, Dilations, as I mentioned before, really doesn't make much of a difference. So this is going to be negative 2, 3. To the power of 2 makes it a parabola. 1, 3. To the power of 6, basically a parabola, but a bit squarer. Now, where students tend to fall down a little bit is when we have a dilation in here and they haven't factorised it first. So often I'll ask the question, well, what's the turning point for this? And I'll get... 6, negative 2, which isn't quite right. You actually have to factorise it first. So if I factorise it first, I can see 
I take that 2 out, 2 times x is 2x, 2 times negative 3 gives us negative 6. So the turning point is actually going to be 3, negative 2. So I chuck that in. The power shows that it's a cubic, and I draw that in as well. Same deal with this one. You have to factorise the inside. And so that's going to be negative 3, negative 2. Chuck that in to the power of 5, basically a cubic. The other point where students tend to fall down is with reflections. So before I go into reflections, just a quick review of functions. So basically, if you've got f of x equals all of this stuff, if you've got f of negative x, that just means you replace all the x's with negative x. And if you have negative f of x, it's a bit like putting brackets around everything and chucking in the negative. So if I have f of negative x, what I'm actually doing here, let's pick a random point, say 2, 5, and we make the x negative. And so the x in this case is 2, so we're going to make that negative. And so we've got negative 2, 5. So by making the x negative, we're turning the y-axis into a mirror. And this works with an entire function as well. Because a function, all that is, is just a collection of points. And so each one of the points, that's going to go there, that's going to go there, that there, that there, and it's going to flip around that y-axis. So if we've got y equals negative x to the power of 3, it's going to flip around this way and end up looking like this. And just to practice a couple of these, if we've got x squared, we make the x negative. What we're going to do is we're flipping it around the y-axis. Now, actually, it doesn't really do very much because it's symmetrical on both sides, but this is kind of what happens. If we put a negative in front of that x with the cube, it's going to flip around the y-axis and it's going to look like this. And if we did the same thing with this graph, which I won't go into today, it'll flip around the y-axis as well. Now, on the other hand, if we make f of x negative, or we make y negative, that does something a bit different. So we've got our favourite point, 2, 5. If we make that 5 negative, it's going to end up flipping round the x-axis. Because, I mean, we can just see it, negative 5, positive 5, and that's essentially what it does. It turns that x-axis into a mirror. And so the same thing happens if we work with an entire graph. It's just going to flip around that x-axis if we make the whole thing negative. So a few examples of this. So we've got x squared. Now there probably should be some brackets around that. But if we make the whole, if we make the whole thing negative, it's going to flip around this way x cubed, if we make the whole thing negative, again, probably should be some brackets around that, it's going to flip around this way. And with this graph, if you made the whole thing negative, it would flip around this way. So sketching with reflections. So we put in the turning point, negative 2, 4.5. We sketch the shape, and what I like to do is sketch the shape to the side. So I'll just draw another little axis up here. And it's uh, to the power of 6, so that's basically a parabola, so we draw that in. And then we look at what the reflection would be. So if there was a negative just in front of that x, that means we'd flip around the y. Because there's a negative in front of kind of like the whole thing, we're going to flip around the x, and it'll end up looking like this. And then we draw it in like that. Now, in reality, when you get really good at these, Pretty much every graph you come across, you'll be able to sketch in like 10, 15 seconds. Just follow a few steps, do that. I haven't even bothered to find intercepts yet. And the reason for this is if I find intercepts and I work out that the intercepts are like, I don't know, here and like way over here or here and here or something that doesn't quite make sense, um, I can tell from my graph whether I've made a mistake. Either my sketch has been a mistake, 
or my algebra has been a mistake. Here's another one. So turning point, um, again, you probably want to factorize the inside first, which I'm not sure I've actually done here. So you factorize the inside, you take that negative out, so it would be negative x minus 2, so that's going to be 2, 6. And then we're going to check uh, writing the actual shape. Because it's to the power of 3, that's an odd, so that's going to be basically a cubic, so we draw in a cubic. And then because there's a negative in front of that x, it means we're going to flip around the y. And it's going to look like this. And then we sketch it in. And again, if you end up doing some algebra, you find out that there's like an x intercept here and here. I think the sketch is wrong for your algebra as well. So it's a really good way of checking something without actually spending any time on it. Another graph here, put in the turning point. I want to factorise that first, so I want to take that 2 out, and that will end up being 2 in there. And so that's going to be negative 2, 3. Uh, sketch the shape to the sign. Power of half means it's half a parabola. And reflection, reflection. Negative in front of the whole thing. It's not negative in front of the x. Negative in front of the x flips around the y. So negative in front of the whole thing is going to flip around the x and look like that. And then we can sketch it here. And this is the trunk, so we won't worry about it. Now, just a quick note about powers. X to the power of negative 1, 1 on x. X to the power of negative 2, 1 on x squared. X to the power of half, square root of x. Now, typically, and this is another point where students tend to get a bit more confused, is that you're going to see it more often in this form than in this form. You won't necessarily not see it in this form, but it's pretty rare. And so you need to have a good understanding, for instance, that x to the power of half, anything to the power of half is the same as just chucking a square root around it. So instead of these brackets and the half, there's just going to be a square root. And it looks a bit different, but um, as I'll show you in a tick, what I tend to do is I get my students to convert it into this form, see the power shows the shape of the graph, and then sketch it. Um, x to the power of negative 1 uh, tends to be a bit more confusing for people. x to the power of negative 1 is 1 on x. And so this is going to be 1 on this stuff. And 1 on this stuff times negative 5 is going to be negative 5 on that stuff. Does that make sense? Okay. If you've got negative 2, same deal, but in the same way negative 2 is 1 over x squared, this is going to be whatever that is divided by this stuff squared. So typically what I like to get people to do is just practice doing these for a little bit, and then um, it becomes a bit easier to sketch. And so we have our final way of sketching, which is these five steps. And if you follow these five steps, life is going to be quite a bit better. So the first thing I like to do is change the form. So I'm just going to turn that into a power form so I can see that the power means the shape of the graph. Then I'm going to factorise the inside, so I'm going to take that negative 2 out. And then it's going to be negative uh, 3, 1, sorry, 3, 1 for the turning point, which is step 3. Then I sketch the shape to the side. Because it's to the power of half, I know it's half a parabola. And then I look for a reflection. So there's a negative in front of the x, so it's going to flip around the y. And then I just draw it in. Same deal with this one. I'm going to change the form. So this is going to be 4 times. 1 on 4 minus x, 4 times 1 on, you need to write all this down, don't just do it in your head. I just don't want to write on your projector. Um, if you've got 4 times 1 on 4 minus x, that's the same as saying 4 times 4 minus x to the power of negative 1 plus 1. Uh, then we want to factorise the inside. It doesn't look like there's a lot to do here. But just the fact that there's that negative x, it's a good idea to do that. Oh, they'll be right, don't worry about it. Um, so there's a negative, x minus 4, so we're going to have a turning point of 4, 1. Chuck that in. Again, not technically a turning point, but we're going to go with that for now. 
um, fat price insights done. Um, shape, negative one means it's going to be a hyperbola. So it's going to look like this sort of shape. But because there's a negative in front of that x, it's going to flip around the y. And so we get that turning point, we draw in our asymptotes, and then we sketch in the rest of the graph. If you've got something like this, a couple of brackets to the power of half, same as the square root. So it's the same as form. Step two, factorise the inside, take that two out. Uh, next thing is turning point, so it'll be negative two, three. So we chuck that in. Then we find the shape, to the power of half means it's half the parabola. Reflections, negative in front of the y, so we flip around the x. And then we just sketch it in. So that's the basics of sketching any graph. I can go into intercept form, we'll see if we have time later, um, or if there's any other particular things that you want me to cover. Anyone got any questions about what I covered there? Okay. If anyone does have trouble with sketching, my recommendation is literally just to follow those five steps. I've got that cheat sheet on my website. I'm sure you'll, I'll send it to your teacher. She can send them out to you as well. But just doing it step by step makes it a lot easier. Now, this is what a bunch of you wanted to know. How do I get good results on the exam? So, um, I'll tell you a little story. So, I was watching a Stanford University lecture, and the head of maths there, he had someone who he worked with, who ended up with um, the Fields Medal. The Fields Medal is like the Nobel Prize in mathematics. And this person was a complete genius. Yet she didn't pass any of her exams. It's really interesting. And what happened is basically you've got two separate skills. You've got the skill of being able to answer the questions, and then you have the skill of being able to score well in the exam. Now, if you don't know anything about the curriculum, you're probably going to have a bad time. But if you've got good exam technique as well, then that's going to heavily affect what your marks are going to be like. Now, my number one piece of advice is to practice doing exams under time conditions. This works with your external, this works with any test that you've ever get. Now, you can imagine, if you've got a person who is wanting to become a football player, they're not going to become a good football player by sitting down and watching football on the telly. They need to actually do football. It doesn't even matter. They can go to the gym, they can get super buff, they can do all sort of the right things. But if they don't practice the thing that they want to get good at, they're going to have trouble. When it comes to exam technique, What's really important is to do what works for you. It doesn't always work the same with every student. Some do things slightly different. But for probably 90% of students I've worked with, this is what I've found has been successful. And the way you will find what's successful for yourself is by doing lots of practice tests under time conditions in your own time. The first thing when I'm coming across an exam is I'll do all the easiest questions first. Now, if you come across a question where you're, you answer the question, you can do it very quickly, great. If you come across a question where you're like, okay, I know how to answer this, but I can't really answer it right now, I can't quite remember it, you should probably skip the question. And the whole idea is you cycle over the exam and go through it a few different times. What happens is once you've read a question, very often it's kind of brewing in the back of your mind as you're going off and doing other questions. And Often you'll come back to it and have a better idea on how to approach it than you did the first time that you saw it. So um, I have a ton of resources on my website. Um, it's worth checking them out. Just go to mathsmethods.com.au. It's a subject that you're studying for the .com.au after it. Um, pop on over the free resources and grab either your cheat sheets, animated videos or exam questions, or all of them, or whatever suits you basically. I hope today has been helpful, hope you got something out of it and thanks for coming along.